The Battle of Bunker Hill occurred on June 17th, 1775. It, w it was fought outside of the Boston on the Charlestown Peninsula. The battle was largely fought on Breed's Hill instead of Bunker Hill. The area was very hilly and had fenced off pastures along the Charles River. This was a very advantaged location for the colonists. Both the British and the colonists held Boston in great importance. Two months after the Revolutionary War broke out, 15,000 colonists lay siege to Boston. They realised they couldn't take the city from the well-reinforced British garrison of more than 5,000 troops. They needed heavy artillery. But as I said, the British were well-enforced and well-trained, and they could send reinforcements in as they held the sea. The British Navy was the most powerful in the world, while the Americans was almost non-existent. The commander of the city, General Thomas Gage, was sure in the abilities of his garrison, and was sure that they could hold out until the reinforcements arrived. But he wanted to take the hills around the city to prevent the colonists from bringing in artillery. In June, the British got their orders to, to claim the land north and south of Boston. The colonists found out about this, of this plan and sent 1,000 men to reinforce Bunker and Breed's Hill because they overlooked the Boston Harbour. They were led by Colonel William Prescott. Almost 1,000 men fortifies Breed's Hill, but only minorly. Prescott was ordered to fortify the better choice of Bunker Hill, but he ignored this. They constructed six foot tall earthworks and placed a stake 100 feet away from these earthworks so that when the British passed it, they knew to open fire. This was to conserve ammunition, as they only had a limited supply. General William Howe of the British Army took 2,300 men to dislodge the colonists. The battle began when the British naval 20-gun post HMS Lively and 128 coastal batteries opened fire on the colonists. Most of the cannon fire fell short of the colonists, and the first British assault failed as a result. But the cannon fire succeeded in lowering morale and scaring off many colonists who fled. The British then organised an attack on the colonial positions. They considered starving them out, but decided on a frontal assault. Prescott's men kept fortifying and expanding the fort on Breed's Hill in the meantime. At midday, the British launched the assault. They were sure the rebels were untrained and unprofessional, and no match for the professional British troops. They were going to attack from the front with the first wave, and outflank them to the right with the second one. The colonial, col colonial troops managed to repel the British forces. It is said that to save ammunition, William Prescott ordered them to not fire until they saw the whites of the British eyes. The tall grass prevented the British from seeing the obstacles hindering their advance. Colonial reinforcements arrived. On the way in, the British were harassed by snipers in Charlestown. The British initially retreated from the hail of colonial musket fire. In response, the British shelled Charleston to create a smoke screen. The wind made the smoke screen fail, and they were once again mowed down and repelled. The colonists couldn't re resupply or reinforce anymore. The British were nervous of attacking again due to their past failures, but General Howe um, remarked to have to give up Boston would, gentlemen, be very disagreeable to all. This time, the British were allowed to take off their heavy packs to improve movement. The third assault was much more successful than the first two had been. 
though the British had to run over the dead bodies of their comrades on the way up. When they broke through, brutal hand-to-hand -hand combat broke out. But the British had bayonets and sabres. The colonists did not, so the British won. The colonists suffered heavy casualties, but retreated well in good order. The Americans lost 450 men, while the British lost 1,000. The British also lost a lot of irreplaceable officers. Because of this battle, the British were forced to change their tactics. George III, the King of Britain, signed the Proclamation of Rebellion, which accused the, Amer accused the Americans of treason, and stated it would be put down in any way necessary. Thank you for watching.